Uh, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, Turn to discuss uh, further into calculus of parametric curves and now look at further into surface area and go over example one of the example series. And that's going over this example which states, show that the surface area of a sphere of radius r is four pi r squared. So this one we'll assume uh, we'll, do, we'll deal with uh, parametric curves just because that's what this topic is on. So, because there's other ways you could find. So first what I'm gonna do is recall the circle in parametric form. And this is from my earlier videos I went over it, but is a good visual way of memorizing. This is x, this is y. And let's draw a circle like that where the center is the origin. Yeah, so the center is the origin, so it's radius r. So what I'm gonna do first is if we have a coordinate like this, if I draw a line across and make a triangle like that, what we have, this is radius r, and let's just say this is our parameter theta, so that's the angle across. From there we use basic trigonometry to get the uh, bottom part right here, the adjacent as r cosine theta, and then the uh, um, and then the opposite, that's hypotenuse, this one's gonna be r sine theta. Yeah, I just moved it over there just for some space. So what that means is that this coordinate right here is going to be, this is gonna be the x1 is r cosine theta, and then the y coordinate is r sine theta. And this is in fact our parametric uh, equations. That's This is our x, this is our y, and then our parameter is theta. So this is the equation of a circle in parametric form, but what I wanna do is, well, we wanna get a sphere. That is a 3D circle, kind of. So what we'll do is, like I've done in my earlier videos on, uh, on deriving the surface area formula, what I'll do is I'll rotate in this case just on the part where or oh, the semicircle where it's above the x-axis, so where we rotate this angle all the way to pi, so that's where uh, theta is equal to pi, and then what we could do is rotate this about the x-axis and then get a shape that's, that's a sphere. So in that case, uh, we're gonna look at, well, when this is flat, theta is zero, and then when you rotate 180 degrees or pi radians, we get, well, that's just pi. So basically what we'll look at is where uh, theta is between pi and zero, and then we can flip it to get a, or rotate it to get a sphere. So if we draw this out like this, this is the x, this is the y, let's draw a semicircle like that, or let's draw a better semicircle. So yeah, here's a, actually a better semicircle. So what we'll have is at this point here is when our theta is equal to zero, and then at this point is at when we rotate it fully or at pi, so, uh, so theta is equal to pi. And then like I've done in my earlier videos, well, the first thing we'll do is, well, we look at a point here, let's just a random point across, let's say over here where we'll call this distance y, and that's gonna be our radius when we rotate it about the x-axis. And like I've done before is uh, there's a infinitely small, we'll call this ds thickness. Yeah, just change it up. It doesn't need to be horizontal. It could be uh, just a slanted line like that, like kind of like an arc length. And then, yeah, and then we can, well, rotate it across here, or I'll draw it in red. Let's, let's say rotate this whole thing across. But when we look at just one segment, so from here all the way to here, we get a rotation like that. And then on the 3D side, dash line across like this. Uh, yeah, so we get something that looks like that, where this one segment has a circumference of c is equal to, well, 2 pi in the radius, which is y. And as that has a thickness like that, ds, so then we can determine the surface area of that part as, well, 2 pi y ds. And then we do that for when we sum it up using an integral, like I've done in the surface area, uh, proof videos, then what we end up having is a 3D shape like that, which is a sphere. And then this overall uh, surface area is our S, like that. And now recall that the surface area formula is, well, S, like I've done in my earlier videos, it's gonna be now in this case from zero all the way to, to pi, and then we have two pi y ds. Yeah, ds like that, because that's the thickness of it, and then we sum it up to, well, uh, infinitely small parts all the way across using this integral, and then where ds is equal to, well, this is gonna be pi, yeah, they also write two pi y, and then recall, this is this ds is gonna be, well, a square root of dx over dt squared plus dy over dt squared, 
and then dt, but remember uh, that the t, that was just a generic parameter. In our case, it's just theta. So just wrote it initially like that. So theta is, is the parameter we're dealing with, like this. And now the next step as well, just to fill in all these parts and then, then integrate it. And we can do this by, well, we know that x is equal to, as I showed in the coordinates, x is r cosine theta, y is r sine theta. So we have x equals to r cosine theta, then we get this derivative, that's dx over d theta, that equals 2, this is going to be r, and then cosine derivative is just going to be negative sine, so we have a negative sine theta. So we can throw this all the way inside there. And we also know that y is equal to r sine theta, so we can throw this inside this y. So we're dealing, putting everything in terms of in terms of the uh, uh, yeah the theta parameter. Let's draw a better box like that. And then the derivative of dy over d theta. This is equal to that's just going to be r cosine theta. And then we could throw this inside there. So what we end up having is s is equal to integral from zero to pi of two pi r sine theta, and then square root. And then we have this negative r sine theta squared. And then this part here is plus r cosine theta squared. And then we just have a d theta on the outside. And now the next thing we could do is we could simplify inside the square root by, well, this is, uh, we could just put square each, each of these terms, this negative r and this r right there, and we can factor it out. So what we do is, well, this is from 0 to pi. Try to simplify it more. So r sine theta square root. So if we square root the inside here, we have negative r squared is just r squared. We also have an, an r squared there. So we could factor the r squared out. So what we end up having as we factor it out, then there's a sine. Uh, squared theta there, and there's going to be a uh, cosine squared theta there, like that. And this is just d theta. So yeah, we just square inside, and then, just, and then I just did it all in one go and factored out the r squared. And now this sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, remember this is just a trig identity. That's just equals to 1. So that is just recall trig identity. That's a Pythagorean trig identity. I'll put the proof in the description below. So when you ever have sine squared, whatever, plus cosine squared, whatever the angle is, and then if they're the same, equals to 1. So that equals to 1. So we're just left with square root r squared. That just cancels. We're just left with r. And then there's an r already there, so we get an r squared. So we get here, and we could take this all out. So we get this 2 pi. These are just constants, because we're doing the integral in terms of theta. And this is going to be r. And then there's going to be an r squared. Just factor it all out. Now we have an integral from 0 to pi of just sine theta. And then d theta like that. And then we can solve this. This is just going to be, well, um, yeah, equal to 2 pi. And then r squared integral of sine theta is just going to be cosine theta. Well, actually, negative cosine theta, because a derivative of cosine theta is negative sine theta. So we put a negative, so it cancels out. And then this is from 0 to pi. So we end up having is this is 2 pi r squared. Then what we have is negative cosine pi. And then uh, we have it as minus cosine or uh, minus negative cosine 0, 0 like that, and overall like that. But well, this is actually a 0, not a theta. My bad. So 0. And now we could uh, solve these. Well, if we just recall the a graph just for uh, easy to memorize what the values are there. Recall that we had this is theta, this is y, and let's say, or instead of y, I'll just put it just to not get confused before. Let's say the uh, y axis is cosine theta. So if we're graphing this curve, it looks something like this, where initially here, this is just 1. Well, not, this is, yeah, this is 1. And then at this point here, this is at 0, this is at theta is equal to pi, and that's at, this is cosine, so this is going to be negative 1 over at this point here. So what we have is at 0, we have 1, so then this becomes uh, negative 1, or, or just put the, yeah, there's a negative there, so we have a negative 1 in the bracket, and then this uh, cosine 
pi, that's going to be negative 1. So then we end up having is a negative, negative 1 like that. So we just have a bunch of negatives. So then what this means is, let's move that bracket away. So we have a negative, this is going to be positive. So we're going to have a positive 1 minus a negative 1, which is going to be added up and equals to positive uh, 2. And yeah, just to clarify again, cosine 0 is equal to 1, but there's a negative, so we put a negative 1. And then cosine pi is equal to negative 1, but then there's already a negative on the outside, so it's negative, negative 1, positive, etc. And we just get plus 2. So what that means is, well, we could just bring this all down, and we get s is equal to, and then we have a 2, the 2 combines, that's a 4. So 4 pi r squared. And there's our formula. That's what we were trying to prove. And that's exactly it. So that's the area or surface area of a sphere around, like that with radius r. And that's exactly this, is this 4 pi r squared. And yeah, that's doing it with parametric curves. And it's pretty a very interesting example on uh, using um, parametric curves and the formula, surface area formula. Uh, to get the yeah, surface area of a sphere, which is pretty cool. Anyways, that's all for today. I hope you learn. Like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.